I first went to Vietnam in 1966. I had the intention of going there to do a book about the war. The book was finally published in 71, Vietnam Inc. It was very much a shooting star. It came and went very quickly. My first impressions were that this was an amazing place. This is a very complex society. What motivates it, the way it works, the forces that work within that society. This is a picture I took, 1968, Tet Mau Tan, Hue. He's at the back of a vehicle, which we were all in, and the North Vietnamese opened up with a machine gun on us. Anyway, he made it. Nothing could have prepared me for this sort of shock of seeing the, the Vietnamese juxtaposed with the Americans. These were two very opposite types of people. None of it made sense, and therefore it became an obsession, really, to try and work out what was going on. The destruction caused by the war was, and still is, horrendous. The amount of land that was made infertile by the use of bombs, napalm, and this substance, Agent Orange, which poisoned the land in such a way that it's now still not able to be cultivated. From a human point of view, the fact is it contained a substance called dioxin, which has caused and continues to cause damage to the genetic makeup of the Vietnamese people. A few years ago, uh, a colleague of mine discovered a village in Vietnam that had the highest percentage of children born deformed of any village in Vietnam. So that about 12% of the children born there were deformed. The place had been so thoroughly sprayed over and over again that even today the breast milk of the mothers contain many, many, many times over the normal amount of dioxin you would find in a human being. They were so poor, there was no way those children were going to leave that village. The, the way they were looked after, that love that existed between the parents and the children, the incredible devotion. I, I've never seen anything like that anywhere else. There are children still being born because of the effects of Agent Orange in the food cycle and also because the damage, the genetic damage that it does is carried on from generation to generation. It means that children have been born today, every day, that are malformed and require a huge amount of effort to take care of them. One of the conditions um, caused by Agent Orange is hydroencephalitis and this means that um, the skull is extended and as a result uh, the child normally dies. Five years is, is, is a long time to live. You often see children with two elbows, two knees on the same limb. Um, and sometimes, often in fact, all kinds of mental retardation. Spina bifida 
um, spinal problems. And of course, those children born with no eyes. Sometimes there's simply no eyeball there. Other times there's no retina. They, they have physically eyes, but they don't work. They've never worked. They never will work. There's a wonderful American living just outside Hanoi, and he's built a village, essentially, to look after these children. You know, the most admirable work possible is taking place there. Last year, we had over 200 international groups come out here. So we're getting out lots and lots of it. It wasn't, it wasn't designed to be an information center. People hear about it, they want to see it, they come out here. So we had 200 groups. So now we're getting out information all over the world about Agent Orange and just about kids who need help. And, what happens, the legacy of war, what happens after a war? You sign a contract doesn't mean the war is over. You still have all this third generation now. The new chemicals that are being sprayed, uh, heavy metals being used. These are not cannonballs you can pick up and put on your mantelpiece. This is something that will be affecting people for hundreds and hundreds of years. And yet we don't look at that. Who gives most money? Which foreign country has donated most? It's very difficult to say, but I, right now it's Germany and France. They do 90% of the work out here. Uh, uh, and what did you get from America? Nothing. We do fundraising, individual fundraising, grassroots fundraising. So a lot of times we'll get 100, 20, 30 bucks at a time, but the U.S. government gives nothing. So he's been here a long time. You can see how he just has no muscle structure uh -huh. in his arms, yeah. same way in his legs. There's thousands and thousands of kids throughout uh, Vietnam like this. You have to realize he's had good food, clean water, good treatment for five years, so you're seeing him at his very healthiest time that he'll ever, ever be. This little girl, she's a brand new child here, but she's blind, so she doesn't understand the world around her at all. What you see her doing is just a emotional nervous problem. In a way. That's her only way to stimulate herself. Right, you're right. That's right. It's all she can do. They'll they'll eventually make her feel at home. This young lady is palsy. She has a hard time controlling her body, but she's a very smart girl. And she's learning to speak English. At this moment, this is what preoccupies me. You know, the, the economic changes in Vietnam are fascinating and interesting, and they come and go, and to follow them, I feel, is important. But there's one thing that never goes away, that never changes. These children keep being born. I'm an American and I keep saying I want it all and I want it now. And the Vietnamese tell me one step. They're much more philosophical. We have a 200 year old country, they have a 4,000 year old country. Right. And they're always telling me one step, one step. And I said, no, I want it all, I want it now. No, don't worry, just take your step. Being around survivors, I think is always inspirational. And whether it's the Vietnamese in general and specifically, those Agent Orange children and the people who look after them. To see children proudly running to grab with their feet because they don't have any arms. And she sits down there and she writes her name and address for me with her toes. They never give up. They learn never, never to say it can't be done. That's why 
you always come back from Vietnam feeling uplifted and counting the days until you can return.